so uh, you should have seen the abstract, so I'm going to just jump over that. We're uh, going to really just show you the, the purpose of our presentation is to show you how uh, the tool works and then to, to have professors uh, explain examples about, of how they're using it in their classes. Uh, so if you're interested in some of the behind the scenes uh, things, those are things, questions that, that Rob will be able to answer for you. We, we can give you a, uh, our experiences for it. Um, I should also point out that Rob's never seen our presentation. He trusted us to just tell it like it is, which uh, I've always appreciated about TechSmith. Um, so I think they're an excellent uh, company to work with. Uh, so here's why we use Relay. Um, First of all, it's just super easy to set up. I'm recording right now. Okay, we're we're live. We're doing a recording. Um, uh, once it's done, I'm going to click one button and it'll publish. Um, it'll go off to a server. It'll get rendered how I've told it to render it, um, and then we can start again, which uh, Bain will present next, and he'll start the next presentation. Uh, every professor can create. Um, I like to think of it as like a free lecture capture tool. You're paying for the server, but nobody's keeping track of licenses. So if your professor has a personal computer at home, or you know you want to have your students use this tool, you're just paying for a server license. And uh, anybody who um, maybe has authentication privileges could technically set up an account if you wanted them to. Uh, you just need a computer and a microphone. You don't even need an internet connection to, to, to do your recording. Uh, you only need the internet connection when you want to upload your presentation later. And then finally, it's, 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 everyone can participate. So um, it, it deals with the common format. So if you want it in YouTube, iTunes U, just an MPEG-4 file, Flash, uh, it can render out to any of those formats. Um, to familiar locations, if you want it to go to a, a campus server or, um, again, YouTube or iTunes U, um, that's your choice. And then finally, it uh, has a, an accessibility component. So you can, have, uh, you can assign trans, uh, transcribers uh, to the system so you can have somebody captioning uh, all the things that you do. And they can, you know, you could have five student workers who were... Uh, assign those roles, and as files came in, they could be um, adding transcripts. So here's a, a slide that Camta or, uh, TechSmith often shows. Uh, it's probably been updated since I didn't let you see it, but um, uh, anyway, this kind of gives you just what happens here. So uh, you see on the left uh, where the pre presenters record. So whoever you've given this tool to, They've got it loaded on their computer and they're recording. Um, in the middle, um, once it's finished, it gets published and it gets sent. The file gets sent to the server and that's where it's turned into whatever profile has been selected. Now, when I was setting up that initial recording, I chose screencast.com as to where I wanted to send it. But I could have picked another profile and had it go there, and I could have picked a profile that sent it to multiple locations. That's all under your control. And then finally, the viewers watch it. Uh, so whatever format that they're watching it in, that's, that's what happens next. And so um, I, we were trying to th think of a, a metaphor for this, and this is what we've come up with so far. Um, so uh, we're thinking of friendship bread. And you know the, the Amish friendship bread where somebody gives it to you and then you give like 12 to somebody else. Uh, it doesn't quite fit, but it's, it's close. Uh, but anyway, uh, the presenter is, is mixing. So they're either, like I'm doing a live recording here with a live audience, um, but both of these people uh, like to do recordings in their office or at home. And so that's, uh, you know, wherever they want to mix, uh, wherever their kitchen is, they can mix there. Uh, then when it goes to the server, that's where it's being baked. And where this kind of breaks down is you put one in the oven, and when you go to take it out of the oven, there could be five there because you had an, uh, one for YouTube, one for iTunes U, 
one for screencast.com, a flash one. That, that's your choice. It could just be one-to-one, -one, but you could pick to have it go to these different places. And then finally, it's, it's served how the person wants it. So if they like, um, uh, what is that, chunky chai applesauce um, <laughs> on their friendship bread, that's the equivalent of they live, their space they live in is YouTube. Their space they live in, you know, is, is Facebook. Wherever it is that you've determined your audience lives, uh, you can render the files for that. Uh, so just to get started, we're you know making this um, more about the uh, what we would show instructors than anything really super technical. So uh, these are our six steps that we use, and just to give you an idea of how well this has gone on our campus, um, when I first did a workshop on this, uh, I was concerned that. Uh, nobody was using it because I gave a workshop and usually you give a workshop and then within a week after the workshop three or four people have called you have set up meetings so that they can really understand how to use the tool and come back and, 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 and work with you and then you might have another meeting with them just to go over it one more time depending on what the tool is nobody called me and so we were you know we were busy we didn't really know what was going on and then we looked at the server stats, and almost everybody that was in the workshop was just using it. Um, we could see that they were making recordings, and they didn't need to ask us any questions. So it, it's as simple as this. So in, in our world, um, they come to a, either a, a workshop or there's some kind of one-to-one -one training that we do with them. Uh, then they log in to the server, and that actually sets them up as... Uh, it's it's LDAP authenticated, and so they're technically in the system, but in order to be someone that we can assign a profile to, they need to log in one time. Once they've logged in, then we choose to manually assign them a profile, but you could choose to just give everyone the same profile automatically when they log in. Um, and, and so that's our step three where we have them do that. Then uh, four, we... Uh, create this profile, and that's where we want to have a conversation with them, because we have professors that are uh, big proponents of open learning, and so they, they want to make sure that this gets out in a format where others can um, access it, and we have uh, professors that are uh, really concerned. They want it to be what they're talking about. They want it to be on Blackboard, but they don't want anybody else to have access to it, so we go over that conversation with them. They download the recorder. The recorder is something they can get to, so they have access to it at any time that they log in, and that means that if they're on vacation to grandma's house and they forgot their laptop and they need to make a recording, they can go on um, grandma's computer, probably a Windows 7 computer or, or um, a, anyway, whatever computer she has, a newer computer, it's, this isn't going to work on everything, but, but they can download the software and, and work it from there. It's, it's pretty simple. And then finally, uh, they just record and publish, and we find at the end, if they want to send it to the university's YouTube or iTunes U site, we uh, get involved at, again at that process, at that particular part. So this is what it looks like for one professor. This is the when... Um, uh, Jerry and Bain are talking to you. This is the process that, that they go through. So uh, basically just five steps here that they're walking through where they open up the program and, and uh, start their recording, uh, trim it, and then they post it to Blackboard. So just quickly, um, this is what I did at the beginning when uh, I think most of you were here, but if you weren't, this is what I did at the beginning. I had my application open. I, I, we're using PowerPoint here. But I could be switching back and forth between different programs. That's possible. So um, it, whatever's on the screen is what's being recorded. Uh, I log into Relay. Now, once you log in, if it's your computer, it just keeps you logged in. So I didn't have to actually go through that process. Uh, this is the, the Relay interface that we saw at the beginning uh, that we can, we can put it into. So I uh, chose the screencast.com profile. Uh, was the one I picked. And you see a list of profiles there. Most faculty just have one profile. Do you both just have one? 
Um, they tell us what they want, and, and that's what they get. Some, some that are mixing, going back and forth between open content and, and content that they're posting in Blackboard have a couple of profiles. Uh, they add the title and the description, so you can see I've got using Creative Commons license is my title there. The description uh, was put in, and then just clicking on the record button. Uh, there's probably a step in here if you're using an external mic where you just want to make sure that that's working. But once you get comfortable with this technology, you just come in and if you're using it in the classroom, you just come in and go. You don't really think too much about it. So I guess I had nice little arrows there pointing at things that I forgot about. So there were my arrows. And, and that's a good, this is a good time to just say things go wrong when you're doing these recordings. And you have to kind of weigh the fact that the people who are your audience, your students, um, don't care how many times you say, um, probably. They're more interested in being able to, to watch that recording and get the information. And so if you think it needs to be a perfect recording, you'll probably never ever get it out. You probably won't send it out to the students. You'll edit and edit and edit and edit, and it, it just doesn't get to them. So uh, I would encourage you to think about it like that, that this is, uh, when you see some of the comments that the students have for it, um, I think you'll, you'll see. So you stop the recording once it's finished. Um, you check it over. So there's an ability here, I'm going to actually do this. Uh, right now, and you, you have the ability to trim it if you want to take the ends off the off of it, and I won't do that. I'm just going to take it like it is, and then the presentation is going to be complete. We're going to see this, so I'm kind of jumping through these real quickly. I'll then get an email telling me that it's been published, and it has a link there that you see a little tiny link that says view. I just copy that link wherever I want it to live. And so in the case here, I was kind of showing how it would live in Blackboard. So there's uh, a place to go in and, and build content and enter the title. Uh, I'm going to skip kind of quick. I know not everybody uses Blackboard, and I think you can just understand. Wherever you want to post it, you post it. So I'm just going to jump through those steps there. Presentation would be made available. And uh, what should happen if everything worked out, we've got nice, fresh bread, lots of different formats that we can eat. So uh, now I'm going to switch here, and I'm going to um, 